so again, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And uh, if you see my big smile, you can tell how happy I am of how these two days have wonderfully gone. Uh, not just the mechanics of how it worked. Thank you to uh, Event Moby and PPL and our communications department and everybody, but the content, the rich discussion, the stimulating exchanges, it was really, really terrific. I want to thank, especially, especially I want to thank Dr. Kim Betcher, who is behind the idea for the FedN, who is the leader with insight for FedN and who leads our newly established policy and planning uh, 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 and program learning department at site doing a wonderful job. Kim, on behalf of everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you. All I give you, Kim. Thank you, Abdu. I, I really want to thank and appreciate the participants. Uh, you have made this event uh, very worthwhile to, to me and many of us. Uh, it's been a very international, very expert audience with think tanks, business association leaders, development democracy organizations, scholars. Uh, really, this has energized us and uh, confirmed the fact that, that people are interested in free enterprise and democracy, that these go together um, in dealing with uh, the current challenges of economic recovery and democratic renewal. Uh, I do want to acknowledge several of our steering committee members from the Free Enterprise and Democracy Network who have been active in this particular conference. Uh, George Botti from Venezuela, Toki Mabogunje from Nigeria, Mieczysław Bank from Poland, Camilia Bulat from Romania, Ali Salman from Pakistan, Peter Goliash from Slovakia, and Badri El Meucci from Beirut, Lebanon. This isn't really closing remarks now. This is a debut for, for FedN. Uh, FedN is 10 years young. It got going in 2012. Uh, we've had delegates from the network to uh, major uh, global conferences, participating in regional activities. We had a debut in Washington at the United States Chamber of Commerce uh, a few years ago. This is the global debut for Fed, and we want more people to, to know about it and participate. Uh, I do want to express my heartfelt thanks to the National Endowment for Democracy, our sponsor, our donor that makes uh, Fed impossible, that made this conference possible. And it was really special uh, for us to, to hear from Carl Gershman, the president of the NED yesterday, uh, to hear his message to us. Uh, what we've been talking about, the deliberations, inspiration for this conference, does feed into SIPE's program strategy, into future FedIn activities, which we're brainstorming today and on, uh, and engagement across countries, across public and private sector, across business and civil society. This is not a one-off uh, PR event. We are learning. Um, the information is feeding, for example, into SIPE's strategic goals. Uh, right now, goal number one, to build resilient democracies and economies. Uh, our work like constructive and corrosive capital is dealing with both capital, the, the financial flows, uh, but also the governance aspects of that. Um, is there transparency? Are our, our, our host country uh, standards observed, right? How, how do the, the political and the economic fit together? Similarly, in rebuilding dialogue that's happening in places like Ukraine, uh, where we heard about the reform sandwich of top-down pressure and bottom-up pressure for reform. You know, we're learning this as we're supporting the Ukrainian coalition of associations on reform, on the economy, and, and, and that's, that's a participatory process. It's a dialogue process that's also very democratic. Goal number two, to promote inclusive democracies and markets. Uh, I love the, the quote from Ron at the, the Philippine LGBT chamber said that we're not getting back to normal. We want a better normal. Uh, we need to be more inclusive. Uh, we need to empower people. And I've learned from this event, you know, sort of a more multidimensional perspective on inclusion. We can't just say, okay, we, women over here, something for youth over there. Uh, we need a better way of looking at who's in, who's out, SMEs, informals. How do they relate to everybody else? And goal number three, uh, to cultivate sustainable networks of change. Well, you might guess Free Enterprise and Democracy Network is a central global network for SIPE, but we have uh, been working with networks of think tanks, networks of business associations who did so much in the pandemic uh, to support the business community and their, and their wider community. Um, so we're taking all this in. Um, I, I really think we need to do some new things like 
Julia Pomares in her talk today talked about the need for new narratives since 2008, the global financial crisis. Um, it's so true that if we don't have a positive vision, if we're only reacting to problems, if we're not telling people what we're trying to change, we're not going to succeed. So learning so much. All right. Uh, FedN is, is going forward. Uh, its members individually have already accomplished impressive reforms. Uh, if they weren't impressive, we wouldn't have asked them to join. Uh, but as a network, uh, I know SIPE is gaining so much. I mean, SIPE, either we're very busy working in individual countries or we're in Washington looking at the world. And, and that's very different from having the, the experts in Fed and telling us what's going on, giving us a bigger picture, giving us a more comprehensive view. It's invaluable to us and it really helps us mobilize a, a better effort. And we want others to benefit from this collective wisdom. Um, the network, they have clarified the principles at stake today. They've exchanged learning across borders. They're identifying promising strategies for recovery and renewal. Too often, I'm, you know, I love innovation. I push innovation. But too often, I'm hearing, we need to do everything differently. We need to discover something new. And actually, new discoveries have been made. You know, there is knowledge out there. There is action and reform happening out there. Very likely, people in this conference have some discoveries that need to be better shared. And we want to support that. We want to cultivate FedN as a source of strategic insight, a platform for collaboration, and a stronger voice for democracy in emerging markets. You will be seeing and hearing more from FedN. We value the connections we've made with you this week. Uh, please do reach out to the, the Secretariat, the FedN team, myself, uh, just email Fed and Secretariat, F-E-D-N Secretariat at C-I-P-E.org. When I hear from you, it makes my day. And uh, this really is the time for collective action. So let, let's work together to defend, renew, and reimagine free enterprise and democracy. We can make some change happen together. I'm going to turn to my friend, Badri El Meucci, who is board member of the Lebanese Transparency Association, now head of excellence in governance, uh, he is a longtime pioneer in governance, whether it's corporate governance, anti-corruption, longtime site partner. I've been to Beirut to see the great work that he's doing. And Badri is here today to share some impressions and themes uh, representing the Free Enterprise and Democracy Network Steering Committee. Badri. Uh, thank you, Kim. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, thank you very much for inviting me and very glad to join you all today. And I'd like to join Abdul in thanking you uh, specifically for all the work you've done in driving uh, this network forwards and, and focusing on these key themes. Um, it's been very interesting to hear from uh, all the different countries who have, um, in a sense, presented what they're facing and, and, the, and the potential solutions to that, uh, to these challenges, uh, whether it's from, from Mexico or Romania or, 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 or in Africa, uh, all around the world, interesting examples of, of the real challenges to democracy and free enterprise, uh, to, to key drivers which go hand in hand in effect for the development, for the positive development of societies around the world. But it's been uh, interesting also to see the, the, how, how uh, many of these countries are facing common challenges. Um, and and uh, in effect, uh, whether it's uh, power cuts in, in, in Pakistan or in Lebanon or hyperinflation in Mexico and other countries, uh, uh, not to mention the, the, the complete uh, 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 kind of downfall of the private sector, specifically uh, due to the, to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, we see so many countries facing similar challenges and, and it's an opportunity in effect to start working together because uh, because, uh, as is often said, a problem shared is a, is a problem halved. And, and in effect, by working together, this was one of the key themes that came across. I think there is an opportunity for countries to work together, for private sectors across countries to work together. But let me uh, touch briefly on some other themes that were uh, 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 addressed throughout this event. And then I'll, I'll wrap up with some uh, recommendations that um, seem to come out from these themes. Um, well, first of all, the need for business, businesses within countries and sectors within countries to work together and also across countries. In a sense, the sense of engagement, the sense of collective action, not only between the private sector, but also between the private sector and civil society uh, to advocate 
for what are the priorities from the perspective of different stakeholders in any given system. Um, uh, th there have been many instances that which we have heard of throughout the event of businesses stepping in and in a sense uh, playing the role of government in providing social relief and also civil society organizations. And, and in effect, by working together, we can not only limit duplication, but also increase impact um, and also increase our voice and, and, and what we're calling for in terms of reforms. Um, there's also been one key theme which has been mentioned, which is uh, the fact that smaller uh, companies, smaller economic players, have been more impacted in the sense that they have not got the reserves which larger players might have, and therefore need some kind of support mechanism to be able to uh, weather the storm. Um, uh, uh, some, some policies which have helped such companies have been deferred taxes, for example, uh, but is that enough? What else uh, could, be could be done, in a sense, to support such companies? Because uh, we should consider the fact that such pandemics will happen again, and we need to think ahead creatively on how to better prepare for the next time round. Um, <clears throat> uh, so in effect, how, how can we think more long term is another key theme that was coming out of this event, that yes, we have short term targets in our immediate objectives in each of our organizations, but it's important to think long term, to think sustainable growth. And I think here, um, there are many standards which we can use as inspiration, specifically focusing around environment social governance, which is the emerging theme for the private sector to consider uh, very seriously. Um, uh, another key theme which came out was uh, corruption, that uh, while there may be a sacrifice to, uh, in the short term to, 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 to fight against corruption and to promote better governance in all of our systems, um, there's no doubt that in the long term, this is a worthwhile investment uh, and enables democracy and free enterprise to flourish because ultimately uh, corruption does put a ceiling, uh, limits on how much democracy and, um, and free enterprise can flourish and develop. Um, there was also some, uh, a very interesting question that was asked um, by, by Maali in Jordan uh, but I think it's on a global level, asking what is wrong with our modern economies, with, with capitalism. There's this, this sense of uh, great inequality, with the rich getting richer, the poor getting poorer. Um, and what kind of, 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 um, of decisions need to be taken, of mechanisms, mechanisms need to be put in place to limit this inequality and hopefully reverse it? Uh, and, and, and bring us towards a fairer system uh, in, in, in so many of our economies. Um, so I'm going to move on to recommendations now. This gives you an idea of the themes that were touched on uh, through all those who, who, who were presenting in this event. And, and you can see here mainly the common themes, in effect, uh, because we can go into so much more detail, as, as Abdul was saying, um, the, 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 the richness of, 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 of substance in all the presentations was really wonderful. Um, but let me move on to the recommendations. Um, first of all, uh, as we mentioned, collective action. There, there is a need to, to, for all of us to invest ourselves more in collective action and to see how the private sector, civil society can work together, whether it is in providing social relief, whether it is in advocacy, there is, I think, um, so much more that can be done here. And I can tell you from our experience in Lebanon, the times where we have been most successful in, for example, pushing for a law to be approved by parliament or uh, enabling uh, or, or raising awareness around an, an issue or in building capacity in public administrations or other entities to implement these new laws. Uh, this has always been more successful when it has been done uh, in a collective way between many organizations working towards the same objective and, and, and sharing that mission together, in effect. Um, another key recommendation um, 
is in a, se in a sense to expect change, not to think that we will get back to a new normal and that this normal will stay there, that we should always be ready for waves of change, in effect. Um, uh, and, and, and collective action will help a great deal uh, in that. Um, another uh, recommendation which, uh, uh, which, which seems to have helped, in a sense, in empowering uh, local actors to push for the reforms or to push for the expression of these, their interests in a more effective manner is decentralization. So, in a sense, empowering uh, actors at the sub-state level to have more of a say, to be more engaged in the process of decision-making on key aspects which impact economy and social aspects of our life. Of our life. So uh, these are key recommendations uh, that came out. Of course, uh, anti-corruption is also a key recommendation. Uh, it is a major impediment uh, to reform. It is a major impediment to economic development. It is a major threat to democracy and makes free enterprise much more complicated and also costly when you think of the bribes that can be involved, depending on which country we, we're, we're talking about. So um, this is a, a kind of um, overview of, of the themes and recommendations which were covered during this, um, this event. And uh, I think they give us a, a great deal of food for thought uh, for what, 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 where we need to commit our energy, our, our our, um, our spontaneous um, kind of thinking process to think out of the box uh, uh, as much as we have, but also maybe more in a sense uh, as we move forwards and as, we, as, as, fed, uh, as the network also considers what to focus on in, in the coming months and years. So I'm going to hand it over back to uh, Abdu um, uh, for closing remarks and thank you again. Badri, thank you very much. And for those with us today, it's the quality of the people that we have at, in Fedden that make it successful. And Badri, thank you very much. You represent that quality, which we really, really appreciate. And you said that the, the deliberations are good food for thought, which they absolutely are. But in my opinion, the success of this meeting, Kim, uh, sets the expectations high for how do we make this also a roadmap to activate Fedden all of these individual, successful, brilliant, um, network, well-networked individuals, how do we make that and activate it into a FEDEN action plan for the next year? The expectations are high, not just for a, a better meeting, better conference next year. This is the first annual one. So the next annual one will have to be better and bigger and more intensive and more uh, um, uh, uh, exciting. But also, how do we activate all these people, all this fed them into action that helps free enterprise and democracy globally. I want to thank you all very much for joining us and for being with us the entire two days. I was watching attendance. Attendance didn't drop. Everybody who came pretty much stayed the entire time, which is also a, a, um, a point of success of, a, of any conference. I want to thank you all for sticking around. Kim, again, thank you very much uh, for everybody, for you on behalf of everybody. The next session is for us to discuss. It's a closed session to discuss with some of the Fed and members on how to activate this group moving forward. For the rest of you and everybody else, I'm declaring this successfully completed first annual conference of Fed. Thank you all very much.